In section 1.2, we're going to talk about radian formulas. The reason why we're going to use radian formulas is, again, like I mentioned in the first video, in advanced math and advanced science, the only measurement that we use is radians because it makes a lot of the formulas simpler to deal with instead of dealing with the 360 degrees. Two pi radians makes things work out easily. Um, the formulas, if you go to take a calculus class, are assuming that you're in radians all of the time. So we're going to talk about radian formulas in particular, and I'm going to talk how to extend these if you're using degrees. So the first formula we need to come up with is for arc length. Arc length has the abbreviation of the letter S. Okay, arc length is S. Well, and that's how far I travel around a circle. So the arc length is going to equal a whole circle and from high school geometry and middle school when you first learned the formula for the circumference of a circle it was 2 pi r times how far you went around the circle. And because we're going around the circle in radians my angle divided by 2 pi radians, okay? Notice that the 2 pi's cancel, and you get S is equal to R theta, okay? And that means radians, okay? You could do the same thing in degrees, where S is equal to 2 pi R times how far you went around the circle in degrees. Okay, well this would be, the 2 cancels out of there to give me a 180, so it's going to be um, theta times r pi over 180 degrees. I would memorize the radians formula, actually degrees over degrees are going to, if that's a degrees, you're going to end up with just but not the unit there, you have a length. But I would memorize S equals R theta, okay? And how did I come up with both of these? Well, it's circumference times a fraction. So if you forget the formulas, it's always circumference times a fraction, which is your angle measurement, divided by one revolution, okay? So that's where those formulas come from. In your notes, it says theta r. Um, I'm used to s equals r theta. Um, so that's what you may see that a lot. So first example is 112. It says, what is the arc length of a circle of radius 18 centimeters um, subtended by the angle of 100 degrees? So I want to find the arc length. Well, arc length is equal to circumference to pi, 18 centimeters, times a fraction. Okay, and in this class we're going to want exact answers unless I ask for the approximate one. And all of you have calculators that should give you fractional answers. So we're going to type 2 times 18. Well, 2 times 18 is what? 36? times 100 is 3,600 over 360 times pi, which is equal to 10 pi. Now, if you were to have typed this into your calculator using one of them that I gave you to use, 2 pi times 18 times 100 divided by 360, again, the calculator is going to give you 10 pi for the answer. Now this is a problem that I would probably have on the no calculator portion of a test. So you need to get used to simplifying fractions. Next example it says the distance from the earth to the sun is 1.5 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. Approximately. Assuming a circular orbit, how far does the earth move in four months? Okay, Let's, I want to know how far this moves 
in four months? Well, first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what that is. Well, no, I really don't have to, okay? So S is equal to two pi R. Okay, times a fraction. Well, four months is one third of a year. So I'm going to take this, divide it by three. And that's gonna give me 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times two is one. One times pi is pi. That's gonna give me pi times 10 to the eighth kilometers. Okay, so again, I did not directly use the S equals R theta formula. On both of these examples, I did circumference times a fraction. Okay. The next thing we need to talk about is angular speed. Okay, and that is how fast something is rotating based off of an angle measurement. Okay, so let's talk angular speed. Okay, remember that speed is equal to distance over time. My units here are going to be like radians per minute, radians per second, etc., or degrees per minute, degrees per second, etc. Unit of time on the bottom. Okay? So angular speed. which is abbreviate, typically the letter W with the tail on it, is going to be angles over time. <clears throat> okay. And that's where I'll put my units down here. So it's gonna be like radians or degrees over seconds, minutes, hours, years, etc. Um, so this is angular speed. Our linear speed, abbreviated by the letter V with the tail on it, is distance over time. And that's going to be meters, feet, kilometers, inches, centimeters, etc over units of time, seconds, minutes, hours, or years. Again, I don't use formulas. I use just the basic formulas. Like I do 360 degrees in a revolution. I do two pi radians in a revolution. The relationship between these two is that the linear speed is equal to the angular speed times the radius. So how do I actually use these? Well, 114 says a merry-go-round is 10 meters across. Okay, that's all the way across. And it's spinning at a rate of 1.5 revolutions per minute, rotations per minute. What is the angular speed in radians per minute? Okay. All I do is do a unit analysis. I do 1.5 revolutions per minute. Then I ask myself, how far do I go in one revolution? Well, in one revolution, I go two high times the radius. Well, the radius here is five meters. Okay, notice my revolutions cancel and I'm left with, oh, I wanted angular velocity. So I do two pi radians per revolution. 
So revolutions cancel and I'm left with radians per minute. Two times 1.5 is three, three times pi is three pi, and I'm going three pi radians per minute. Okay, notice if I'm doing angular velocity, I don't care what the radius is because angular velocity doesn't care about that radius. Okay, now I'm gonna do this second one, the linear, the linear speed. So I had angular speed, and now I'm gonna do linear speed. Again, um, I'm sorry I called it angular velocity. Velocity also has a direction. When you get to calculus, we'll talk about that direction, so we're just gonna call that angular speed. Our linear speed, again, I'm going 1.5 revolutions per minute. And how far do I go around in one revolution? I go two pi, times my radius per revolution. Okay, so I cancel out my revolutions and I'm left with meters per minute. Well, I want kilometers per hour. Well, there are 60 minutes per hour. So I have hours and there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. And if I multiply all of this out, um, I get 10 times 1.5 is 15. 15 times 60 is 900. Cancel out two of the zeros. Let me use the calculator. So 15 uh, 15 pi times 60 divided by 1,000 that gives me 9 tenths pi okay which is approximately 2.83 kilometers per hour. So the 9 tenths pi you can do without a calculator, <coughs> which is our exact answer, and that, that would again would be kilometers per hour. So again, I just do these using unit analysis. Let's do this one the second way, which is to use this formula. Linear speed is angular speed times radius. Well, linear speed is equal to 3 pi times the radius so that and then that would give me 15 pi meters per minute and again I would do the same conversion 60 minutes per hour and 1 kilometer is 1000 meters and you would get the exact same answer I do not memorize this formula. I just logically ask myself, what am I doing when I'm doing one of these problems? So the second example we have is example 115. And it takes us back to example 113, which was the earth problem. And reminder, it says the earth is approximately 1.8 times 10 to the eighth make sure that that's the right number. 1.8 times 10 to the 8th uh, 1.5 times 10 to the 8th, sorry. So I wanted to check. Meters from the sun. Uh, kilometers from the sun. And it wants us to calculate the linear speed. Okay, so linear speed, and it wants its units in kilometers per hour. So let's ask ourselves what's happening here. Well, in one revolution, it goes two pi r kilometers. 
okay? Per revolution. And I need to turn this, um, I'm trying to find my speed. Well, it does one revolution in how long? In a year. So my revolutions are gone, I now have kilometers per year. I need to convert years to hours. So in one year, I have 365 days, and in one day, I have 24 hours. Days cancel, years cancel, and I'm left with kilometer per hour. And now it's, put this into the calculator, so I have two pi times 1.5 times 10 to the eighth, two times pi times 1.5, um, 10 to the eighth, divided by 365, divided by 24. And no equal sign, because I'm using the calculator, 107, 589 kilometers per hour. So that takes us through our speed calculations. The other type of calculation that we use when we're using radians are area calculations. So we figured out lengths, we figured out speeds, and the last one we have is area. And a reminder from geometry is that if I have a circle that I cut a piece of pie out of, that piece of pie is called a sector. Okay, so if I take a circle and cut a piece of pie out of it, that little piece is called a sector. Okay, the way that I calculate areas of sectors is, well, what's the area of a circle? Well, area of a sector is equal to the area of a circle times a fraction of a circle. Okay, and the area of a circle is 2 pi r Two pi r theta over two pi. No, it's not two pi r. Sorry about that. Erase pi r squared times theta over three sixty. Okay, that one does not simplify. This one's pi r squared times theta over two pi which is one half r squared theta. So those are the two different ways you can come up with a formula. And again, I don't memorize these two formulas. I you come up with the formula every single time I do the problem. So example 116. It says a wedge-shaped piece of pizza. has an area of 60 centimeters squared. Okay, the end of the slice makes an angle of 35 degrees. What is the diameter of the pizza? Okay, so in my area of my sector, equals the area of a circle, okay, times a fraction, okay? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to solve for radius, okay? 
okay? And again, I'm gonna get an approximate answer. So first thing I'm gonna do is multiply by 360, divide by 35, divide by pi. R squared equals 60 centimeter squared times 360, microcrease are canceling, divided by 35, pi. Okay? And then in order to get the answer, well, normally when I take the root, I'm gonna take plus or minus square roots. In this case, I am just going to take the positive square root because area has to be positive. So I get 60 times 360 over 35 pi, which is approximately, so I'll take the square root of the, take the square root of the fraction 60 times 360. Sorry, my calculator died. There, square root of the fraction 60 times 360 over 35 pi. That's approximately 14.02 centimeters. Well, I don't want the radius, I want the diameter. So the diameter is approximately 28.04 centimeters, and I would say approximately 28 centimeters for this answer. So the big thing I want you to remember for any of these formulas, whether that I'm using degrees <coughs> or radians for the formulas for arc length, Linear velocity, angular velocity, or sector area. Just remember your formulas for an entire circle and multiply the formula for your entire circle times whatever fraction that you happen to be doing of that circle and you will be able to come up with the answer, okay? When I'm doing the linear velocity and angular velocity, make sure you're looking at units, do unit analysis, because sometimes you'll have to do like we did here, convert years into hours or convert uh, minutes into hours. You know, So if it's doing a certain number of revolutions per minute and I wanna know what the linear speed. Yeah. Let me get rid of the velocity, sorry. Linear speed and angular speed. If I wanna know the linear speed, if it's doing revolutions per minute, and I wanna know the linear speed in kilometers per hour, then I'm gonna to have to do some unit conversions at the very end. So again, big thing is figure out what it's doing per revolution or how far around it's going in relationship into an entire circle and use your entire circle formulas.